Hey, what's going on guys? Flick here, and today I'm happy to provide you with some more FIFA 17 career mode information. EA did drop overalls of potential for 93 career mode hidden gems. Although some of these players are pretty mainstream, there are a couple of good ones in there that I think will be of significance to you. For this particular video, I'll be including all the players with 88 or higher potential, as well as a few others who did stand out to me. I won't spend an extensive amount of time talking about each player because I don't want this video to drag on too long for you guys, but I will provide a link in the description to the full list of players that EA did include. As more information is provided for FIFA 17 and the full database is released, I do plan on making some more videos similar to this one for you guys to help you prepare for FIFA 17 launch day. But if you guys do go on to enjoy this video, help me out by dropping a like down below and drop a comment also letting me know what player you most look forward to using in FIFA 17 career mode. But with that said, let's get into the video. We will be starting off with the 90 potential players and one thing I do want to add before we get into the meat of things is the car stats you do see on these cards are not confirmed for FIFA 17. I tried to get them to as close of a rating as they were in FIFA 16, tried to find a point in career mode where they most closely reflect the rating they will have for FIFA 17. But with that said, our first player today will be Dele Ali from Spurs. He has moved up to a gold card and listed as a center attacking mid. Some nice stats on him and he will be a very popular buy in career mode. Usmane Dembele will be our next featured card, and he did make the move over to Dortmund in the summer, also made the move to right mid rather than center attacking mid. I don't think that impacts him too much, because he does have the four-star skills and the pace to work on the wing. And I think he, again, will be a very popular buy in crew mode. He was one of the household favorites in FIFA 16 once he started getting those massive upgrades and was banging in the goals, and I see similar things happening in FIFA 17. Back to the Premier League with Anthony Martial. He is listed as a left mid, but I see a lot of people will be using him as a striker for FIFA 17. He just has the card stats to work well as a striker. You know, he's almost wasted, in my opinion, at left mid, but where if you do like to play him, I think he's going to be a fantastic buy in career mode. Renato Sanchez will be our final player with 90 potential, and he also made the move to the Bundesliga in the summer to Bayern Munich. And with him being at Bayern Munich, I wouldn't be surprised that he gets a lot of attention and also some upgrades over the year. He's that perfect box to box center midfielder and he will fit right into your midfield. Moving on to the 89 potential players, we do have the Croatian wunderkind, Alan Halilovic, and this guy has been pretty popular in the last two FIFAs or so with the four-star skill moves. The one downside to him in the last couple FIFAs has been his stamina. If that does improve, I could see him being a very popular center attacking mid option in FIFA 17. Marco Asensio, another one of those players that has undergone massive upgrades in FIFA 16. He is now 81 rated for FIFA 17 and playing at Real Madrid. He's going to cost a fortune in career mode, but he could still be an option for you guys if you do want him bad enough. Yuri Tillemans may have been the most oversigned player in FIFA 16, considering his potential and the cheap price you can pick him up for from Anderlecht, and I don't see that changing at all for FIFA 17. He's got that high potential of 89 and still playing for Anderlecht, so for all you YouTubers out there, watch out for him in the comment section. Our first defender to showcase in this video will be Kurt Zuma moving back over to the Premier League, and this guy does deserve his 89 potential in my opinion. Just a rock in the back for Chelsea and has the pace to show for as well. He'll be a very popular signing in career mode. If you can afford him, he'll be a hefty price tag from Chelsea. Onwards to the 88 potential players and the first German to feature in the video is Julian Brandt. There's a big controversy of whether to use him as a left midfielder, right midfielder, or even a center attacking mid. And his lack of pace maybe fits him best as a center attacking mid, but he is starting out at a left mid for FIFA 17. And as long as he does keep those four star skill moves, He'll be one of the first buys I do make in FIFA 17. Kingsley Coman has been bossing it up at Bayern and got some massive upgrades in FIFA 16. Wouldn't be surprised if I saw that again in FIFA 17. As long as he stays consistently in the Bayern starting 11 or even in the subs, he'll get some upgrades this year. Angel Correa is one of those strikers that outplays his rating. I don't know if you guys used him in FIFA 16, but he was just a monster for me. Anytime he got in front of goal, he seemed to put it away. And he has that pace, the shooting, the dribbling, everything you really do look for. And I believe he also has four-star skills, so he'll be a popular option in FIFA 17. There were rumors going on that during the summer, Jurgen Klopp was set to sign Mahmoud Dahoud from Borussia Mönchengladbach. And that would have made him lose two of their midfielders and Granit Xhaka and now Dahoud. But he's still over at Borussia Mönchengladbach, and that's good to see. I still think he can develop further at that team. And if he can pick up a couple of upgrades in FIFA 17, he'll be a very promising midfielder 
midfielder going into the future. For FIFA 17, I think we have a player to take the throne for top goalkeeper, and it's going to be John Luigi Donnarumma. He's taken it from another Italian in Scufetta. Some say Jack Butlin is the best young player, but he's not even included in this list because I think he's getting up there in age now past 21 and Donnarumma so much potential ahead of him and he has every stat that you're looking for and even the height as well he's going to be a very popular signing in crew mode once he was introduced halfway through FIFA 16 everyone got on that hype big move here as Brill Donald and Bolo has shifted from a striker to a right midfielder I think that's going to change the mindset of a lot of players because he was a very popular signing in FIFA 15. I wasn't a big fan of him in FIFA 16, but he did get those four-star skills in FIFA 16, so he may be better suited at the right midfield than he was at striker. Jimenez is one of the biggest surprises for me, not in terms of his rating, but his potential. I think it should be higher. How an 83-rated player that's still very young, doesn't have 89 or even 90 potential, is past me, but he still looks like a very solid card. I used him several times in FIFA 16 and I would recommend you guys sign him as well. And speaking of big surprises, I have no idea how Ian Nacho is not higher rated. Only 74 at the start of FIFA 17, but I don't think it's going to stay that way for long. He's going to continue to bag in goals and get a couple upgrades. That's my prediction, but don't get me wrong. He still looks like a great card, has the pace, has the finishing, and if you can train him up like I did at the start of FIFA 16, he'll be a beast for you. This guy Lemos came out of nowhere for me. At the start of FIFA 16, I think he started as a bronze player, and suddenly he's an 80 rated gold with the pace, with the defending that you look for in a center back. Maybe he's the next David Luiz. That's the first player that does come to mind and I think he's going to be one of the top players in FIFA 17 career mode. I mentioned Yuri Tillemans as an oversigned player in FIFA 16. I think Charlie Musonda is going to be the oversigned player in FIFA 17. He has the pace, he has the dribbling, he has the skills, everything you look for in a player on career mode. Don't get me wrong, I'm going to be using him as well, but he's going to be a very popular signing. Marcus Rashford, the boy that changed Manchester United's season last year, has made his way to a 76 gold rating and he is going to be oh so popular in crew mode. One, he plays for Manchester United. Two, he's young, he's English, and that is the main demographic for FIFA, and I think he's gonna have so much potential ahead of him. If he can continue to score goals, he's gonna keep getting upgrades and maybe even get a boost to his potential. In my opinion, Sanabria was one of those overlooked players in FIFA 16, and I'm not sure why. He doesn't start as the best looking card, only 78 rated, but if you can train him up and just let him grow as he naturally does, man, he's got some of the best finishing I've used on any striker. And if you haven't had the chance to use him, I would recommend doing so before FIFA 16 is over because he was absolutely incredible for me. Leroy Sané did make the move to Manchester City from Schalke over the summer. That's another German player abroad. That's always good to see. And with the move, he did get an upgrade to a 79 with the 90 pace, he will be a threat on the wing. A big position change here as Saul has moved from a right midfielder to a center mid, and in my opinion, he plays so much better there. He doesn't have the pace to succeed too well on the wing, but as a midfielder, man, you can use him as a box-to-box -box player. He has the pace, the shooting, the passing, the dribbling, the defending, the physical, everything you're looking for in a box-to-box -box center mid, and I think he'll be one of the more popular signings in career mode. Despite missing most of last season due to an injury, Luke Shaw got a plus three upgrade and making him even better than what he was before. He's kind of been one of those career mode left backs that everyone signed before it was at Southampton, now it's at Manchester United, and I still think he's gonna be pretty affordable. Some argue that Raheem Sterling has reached a standstill in his career after making the move from Liverpool to Manchester City, and he certainly hasn't gotten an upgrade for FIFA 17. Still a solid player with the 93 pace, the skill moves, and the shooting, but I'm hoping that he does perform a little bit better this year because... He's been at a standstill the last year or so. He used to be one of those top prospects in Kuruma, and that's gradually slipping away. The final player to close out the 88 potential players is Jonathan Ta, another German from Leverkusen. And honestly, Leverkusen are a great shout for a Kuruma team. They've got a lot of young potential players, and they also have some established older players like Hakan Chalonoglu, like Stefan Kiesling up front. So that's just my two cents on that. But he is a rock in the back for you. Not the paciest of players, but with 68 pace, he should be able to get by his defending and physical attributes are absolutely 
amazing. Though. We're on to the 87th potential players and another one that burst onto the scene for Manchester United last year was Fosu Menza. Got some game time and got some upgrades in career mode. Same thing could happen this year and he's a good shot for center defense in mid. He will get upgrades from the card you guys see on the screen right now and he's got the pace and also the defending ability. Hector Bayerine is a bit low on the potential in my opinion. I thought it would be an 88 or 89 but he'll still be one of the most popular signings at fullback due to his pace and his defending ability is not bad at all so he's going to be one of those go-to players at fullback. If you're not familiar with Joshua Kimmich, then you better well start reading up because this guy has such a future ahead of him. He's got the stats to play anywhere on the field, whether that's in the midfield, whether that's at fullback. He's so versatile and, man, so promising. I watched him over the summer at the Euros playing for Germany, and he's getting consistent play time for the national team, for Bayern Munich, what else can I say? In my opinion, Viktor Kovalenko will be a popular signing in FIFA 17 because he's not in one of the major European leagues, which means you can usually pick him up for a discounted price, and he has everything you're looking for. Very balanced in his pace, shooting, passing, and dribbling, so there's no reason not to buy him. We have a few players in the 86th potential group, and the first one being Leon Bailey. This guy served as a super sub for me. Also, a player that you can pick him up for cheap from Gank, and he's solid in that he has enough pace at the start. So as you continue to train him up, you can use him as a super sub, someone that you bring on late in the game and just burst by the fullbacks. And he's got a decent potential ahead of him. And if he's anything like he was in FIFA 16, he'll be a good buy. A similar argument could be made for Victor Cherney. He was dirt cheap at the start of FIFA 16 career mode. And if that's going to be the case for this upcoming year, he has shifted from left wing to right wing. Don't know if that's going to make a big impact on his play, but he was extremely solid for me last year. Dragowski was a sought after goalkeeper signing due to his obscure league in the Polish league at the start of FIFA 16, but he's now since moved over to the Serie A, which will make him not as popular of an option. Still a decent player with some good potential ahead of him, but he's going to be much more expensive. Our final group of potentials will be the 85 potential players and Cook was one of those popular English players during the summer. He has since made the move from Leeds to Bournemouth in the Premier League. And if you can work on his training, then he looks like one of those box-to-box -box center midfielders. Pretty low in the shooting to start off with, but hey, he could even get an upgrade for FIFA 17, so keep your eye out for him. Ryan Gold is always a fan favorite in Kermo, known as the Scottish Messi. And if he can't keep his pace, dribbling, and skill moves, the same case is going to be for FIFA 17. Still playing Liga Portuguesa, so you could pick him up for cheap. Serge Gnabry is a very interesting case study. Spent a number of years over at Arsenal, but never really developed into the first team but has now made the move to Werder Bremen, and if he could have a standout season in the Bundesliga, you could see him getting some upgrades, and in my opinion, I've seen him play a couple of times, he has looked promising, and is a very solid option with the pace and the skill attributes that he does have on the right, so look at him as a potential backup option at right mid. Niang is one of those players you can use anywhere as an attacker, whether that be on the wing or at striker, has the pace, shooting, and dribbling ability to use anywhere on your team. And again, he's been a popular option the last couple of career modes. Not going to be any different here. For those of you that did watch the Liverpool career mode, you know how important Divock Origi was for this team because he had the pace and the skill attributes to make an impact whenever he was on the pitch. Didn't feature a lot for me in my first team, but was a super sub. And if you can train him enough, he can become a crucial first team player for you. Our second to last player will be someone who has hung around the last couple of career modes. I would say his peak was at FIFA 15 and he hasn't developed much since then. Simone Scufetta, still a solid option, but I think he's lost the number one Italian goalkeeper option to John Luigi Donnarumma, who just has more potential. He's younger, and everything about him is better. Scufetta, though, could be a solid second option. Our final player to feature today will be someone who is a fan favorite here on the channel, Timo Werner. I've signed him for so many career modes. He was an absolute boss for me for the U21 Euro YouTuber tournament, and I can't wait to use him for FIFA 17. He has now moved from Stuttgart, who got relegated now to Red Bull Leipzig, and I think he could play an important part in the Leipzig team because he does have Bundesliga experience for a newly promoted team. He could see some upgrades this coming year. But guys, that'll wrap things up for today's video. I hope you have enjoyed this FIFA 17 informational video. And as we inch closer to the FIFA 17 release, I'll have more of these kind of videos out for you guys. If you haven't yet, make sure you drop a like down below for me because it helps out the channel oh so much. If you have stumbled across this video by accident or randomly, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. And I do have links to my Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch down in the description below. But until next time, this has been Flake. I'll be talking to you guys again soon.